Uh, just uh, two things. One, you, you've told me that you've been working with the Gold Key release together by yourselves. That means without me. Yeah. Which means that you've got some experience under your belt. A little. Mm -hmm. A little. And it may be sufficient for the next step. I don't think for the others because they haven't been consistently showing up. But for you two, it may be time to teach you the big Lollapalooza. Well, Lollapaloozas are always mm, interesting. Uh, yes. Yes. I see Heidi take a big breath on that one. Yeah, no, I was wondering if now or if we can uh, uh, prepare a little bit more better. Because we did. Well, I'm not saying to teach it now. I'm just oh, saying okay. that yeah. conversation right now. Oh, okay. Yeah, because there are some things also I wanted to ask you. What was it this morning? When we... um, there's something about the procedure. How to. Uh, turn it was the, the gem, the wish fulfilling gem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh -huh. And when to remember was it had a problem with remembering? No, no, it was um what was it? I sort of projected it in the future what I want to. And when you say feel it in your body, then it's the, the visualization I feel in my body or what I feel in my body what I want to. It's not something which I feel as a present state of not having it, or oh, I was a little bit confused in, in that. Because at the tell. moment, I tell you what it is. I want to be uh, more agile, more feeling more light, you know, and more mobile and so on. And at the moment, I, I don't feel that. So when you yeah. ask me, where is it in your body? I can, my body feels not so light, but when I go into my vision, I sort of, when you say remember, I remember how it was as a child. You know, and then in the in the vision, in the imagination, I sort of uh, see myself doing roles like in Aikido, some of these these things which are or, or running up the the stairs or something like this. So I was uh, not sure what what it was when you said feel it in your body. What I should feel the 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 future state or my present state? Okay, so I need to address several points in your question. Ah. First thing is, when we're creating an experience, we never create it projected into the future. Ah, okay. Because you don't experience it projected into the future when it's happening. Um, no, when, when it is happening in the future, I experience it then, but not now. But I can experience the difference when I imagine it. I, I can feel the difference in my body. Well, that's another point I want to address separately. Okay. The first thing is when we're creating it, we're not creating it in the future. We're creating it presently. Mm -hmm. We're generating the, sent, the experiential configuration, let me say it differently, as if it's happening now. We're generating the experience Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, an analogous but different example is in dreaming. In dreaming, you're experiencing it as if it's happening now. Mm -hmm. Yes. Even though it has no dense, tangible existence. True. So that's the first thing. The, the second thing having to do with wanting to feel lightness, it does not occur from removing ourselves from the kinesthetic or feeling zone and going into the visual. That's spiritual bypassing. What you're talking about is a sensory motor condition. And for that, somatic education exercises are the direct route. And then you don't have to imagine you are lighter. You feel lighter, you move lighter, you are lighter. And that involves something that has scarcely been addressed in the integral teaching, which is the awakening of, uh, come on, come on, here comes a $10 word, proprioception. Proprioception. That means, that means <laughs> self-sensing. Yeah, mm -hmm. I understand that. And human beings are scarcely at all educated in self-sensing. Agreed. Mostly. Mostly it's psychological that's taught. Mm -hmm. And for well, that reason... 
or thought process. Yes. But but, physical... Okay. I'll... Practically non non-existent. And so what happens is people age badly. They develop pain, stiffness, lose the posture of youth. And the reason this is occurring is because memories of past stress and injury and repetitive activities become ingrained in the person so that they're always just below the surface ready to be reactivated. Mm -hmm. And that state of readiness is not a void state, a zero state. It's a state in which, like the idling of your car, the engine is running. The muscles are in a heightened state of tension in the patterns of those past experiences. So the person gets more and more memory, more and more tension patterns. And they call that aging. It's not aging. It's just the accumulation of memory patterns. And so the somatic education exercises do two things. One is they awaken self-sensing ability to those patterns so that they're no longer below the surface like shadow material. They are surfaced, available to perception. And the second thing is they bring those patterns back into voluntary control instead of having them run on autopilot or automatically, which is the usual state for humans. Yeah. So th that's the most direct route for you. The gold key release has its effect at more of the, psycho I'm going to call it psychological levels, recognizing that language is misleading. There are not two, mind and body. There's only one. And I'm going to have now to explain something that I've never explained to anybody before. But well, we already which, know that. <laughs> well, that the mind is, and body are one. <laughs> well, you may know it, but do you experience it that way? Oh. Big difference. Okay, I'll wait. I'll, I'll, I'm listening. I'll t uh, first, a brief lead-in. I attended a workshop with Genpo Roshi and Ken Wilbur last year, I think it was. And comments came up after a certain bit of talk, and I raised my hand, and I said, I can't find any difference between mind and body. And Genpo said, there is no difference between mind and body. Mm -hmm. okay? That's just a little tiny bit of foundation. It appeals to a bit of authoritarianism. Did the authority agree? <laughs> <I'm> sure. <laughs> I didn't need that agreement because mine was not a complaint. Mine was a statement of observation. I cannot find any difference between mind and body. Now I go into the explanation. Okay. In development, we do start out at the sensory motor level. That means learning to crawl and creep and stand and move. And that goes on for about seven years of development. And that's called gross motor control. Gross means not really sharp, fine, and precise. During that time, there's an overlap in which emotional development also occurs. And emotional development always occurs as physiological changes. So when a person is angry, the back stiffens, and the, person, the face, the jaw sets there are characteristic patterns to that. For, for fear, it's a tightening of the front and a restriction of breathing and other postural changes. The shoulders round forward and you get this kind of thing that you see in old people. Thank you. Thank you. Listen, he doesn't Thank see you. me in profile. Let it be. <laughs> okay. The, the truth is I do notice everybody on the calls. When the chin is lower than the shoulders, I know they're stooping forward. They're mm -hmm. tight in the front. Mm -hmm. So fear has that characteristic pattern. I've tremendously oversimplified. I'm not going into detail. Yeah, no, uh, no need at this point. Ex for this, at this point. And sorrow also has a contraction state. We generally feel it around the heart region. But also you may re recall that any time a child hurts themselves, what do they do? I've forgotten. 
They cry. Yeah, sure. Okay. My throat is often, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right, the lump in the throat. Mm -hmm. So trauma is associated with sadness. Yes. Frustration with anger. Mm -hmm. And restricted breathing, anxiety and fear. The front of the body tighten. Mm -hmm. Emotions always involve physiological changes. They involve not just hormonal changes like adrenaline. They involve neuromuscular changes. And those changes get hooked up in the developing human to situations mm -hmm. that they didn't have hooked up before. They learned certain things you should be afraid of, certain things you may be angry about, particularly if you learned one way and something else happens. Mm -hmm. and sorrow. So there is a second stage, but it is still a somatic development. And That's somatic it. does not mean body. Body is like a flatland view. Somatic is both internal awareness and external awareness. Mm -hmm. Getting back to proprioception or self-sensing, mm -hmm and exteroception, or sensing the world around us. Okay. That's still somatic. Next thing that occurs is cognitive development. And that generally, rule of thumb, you start getting more emphasis at the ages of between 7 and 14 years. Mm -hmm. you're, getting, you're, you're getting more of an emotional development, 14 to 21. This is where you're in middle school and high school more of a mental development. Mm -hmm. And that ties in with skill development, patterns of refined movement, but also patterns of attentiveness, paying closer attention to the finer distinctions and having words connected with them. Sure. So when a child is crying, they don't need to be any words. There may be words if they're complaining. But when it's a cognitive thing, there are always words associated. <laughs> so it's going to the mental. And here's the, the crucial question. How can you tell when you're thinking? I find it ever more difficult to make a distinction between when I think and when, when I feel. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. but that's a, that, that answers a different question. I'm just asking, how can you tell when you're thinking? How can you tell when you're thinking? Oh, I suppose you could tell from my body. I might have a characteristic expression. Um, well, that's somebody else rhythms. looking at you, but how can you tell you can, when you are I thinking? Tell. I think most... Most of that is not terribly conscious. Most of my thinking is automatic. Uh, some, doing something extremely deliberately that requires concentration and paying close attention. You know, that, how do I know? Uh, there, there's, there's a feeling of focus. There, you said it right I, there. Mm -hmm. It's a feeling. Mm -hmm. That's how we tell when we're thinking. Thinking has a feeling to it. Yeah, it does. We, so we feel thinking. Uh, I don't get that. Well, I, I get the difference. When I, when I looked at you telling uh -huh. the story, I uh, could make a clean difference between only listening to you and having my own thoughts. Mm -hmm. You know, I knew when, when my own thoughts came in. But How I could you know? If I felt that, I, I observed it more. Yes. Well, okay, you may look use a visual term like I observed it. Even so, you sensed it. I knew it. Yeah. Well, you knew it after you sensed it. Knowing comes after experience. Maybe I have to think about that. <laughs> there you go. There's a feeling you're having right now. I have to think about it. it has a certain feeling to it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Here's a little exercise that Thomas Hanna took us through during our training with him. He said to count to 10 aloud and had us do it as quickly as we could while articulating each word clearly. You can't slur the words. You have to articulate it clearly. Okay. Then he had us think counting from 1 to 10 as quickly as we could. <laughs> okay. Uh, do you want us to do that? Yeah, do it. It'll take us 20 seconds tops. All right. Okay. Out loud. 1, 2, yeah. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. All right. Thinking. Yeah. See, you can't think it any faster than you can say it. <laughs> it took longer. Yes, it took longer. Thinking took it, longer. Yeah, in either case, though, you see, thought is not often some ether zone. Thought is the body or soma thinking. Mm -hmm. So the mind, the thought process, is also a somatic process. Oh, I, oh, I, I understand that. I, I agree with that. That's intuitively. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now, if we look at a subtler form of experience, and I'm not sure how I'm going to go with this one, because um, although I'm familiar with intuition, I'm not confident that everybody has the same connection to that word as I do. But I will say that it's been observed that even in dreaming, there are physiological changes, rapid eye movements, sure. change of brainwave function. Mm -hmm. So even the yeah. subtle zone is a somatic experience. Oh, yeah. Oh. You can do yeah. it with the doggy. <laughs> with the doggy when he is sleeping and, and then the feet do like this and, we, yeah. <laughs> and he is eating good food. Yeah, you can see that. Yeah. So we've gone from gross to subtle. Now let's do causal. Causal is formless. Yeah. It is the constant thread that goes through a life that never varies. It is our sense of hereness. Yep. And that can only be experienced directly when all the other processes are quiet. Agreed. So even the experience of the causal is a somatic experience. By absence of the other experiences. Yes, and it puts us in contact with the root of subtle and gross, which is causal. And causal isn't another plane or space or dimension. Causal is the condition of this experience. Causal modifies to become subtle and concretizes to become gross. Mm -hmm. This is all the causal. Oh, and Ken Wilber would agree, yes. <laughs> okay. The authoritarianism. But, <laughs> well, you know, it's nice to have con congruency among different sources. Yeah. Now, the question becomes, how do we deal then, though, with those different layers? Because they are all simply variations of modulation of the same thing. Yes. It happens that if you're dealing with sensory motor, there is an avenue of approach which more, works more easily than others. It doesn't work to try to imagine yourself relaxed. Past a certain point, you can't get further by mentally doing it because mentality is an effort and effort always involves tension. You can't do it that way. Likewise, emotional states, you can't get past a certain point by just trying physically to relax and take a big breath. There's a limit to how far you can get to that. If you want to clear up an emotional condition, you've got to go at it at the emotional level. Likewise, thought processes. You can't get a change of thought processes by changing the emotions. It may get softer, it may get harder, but the opinion, the mental construct 
the hardness of opinion that comes from a mental construct has to be addressed at the mental level to get it all. Okay. All right. Okay. So even though there are different forms of the same thing, there are approaches that are more ideally suited to each of those different bands of experience. When we do the gold key release, we're addressing it at the feeling level, at the attentional level. When we're working with emotions, we're working at the emotional level. If we're working with a thought, we're working at the thought level using the structures that are true of all those levels, which are the Tetra Seed. Okay. Or in, in the somatic teaching, they call it the arc soma. What's the, what's like an archetype. archetype. Or like an archetype. The archetypal soma. The okay. arc soma. <clears throat> so if you want to feel more fluid and get the ease of youth, youthful movement back, you're better off dealing with it at the sensory motor level, even though you're still dealing with attention, intention, memory, and imagination or eros, agape, agency, and communion. You're just a, a, applying it through the medium in which you're working. You're not trying to get an emotional avenue entry to the physical. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> However, we notice that when we deal with an emotional matter and we let go of it, we get physical changes. Sure. Also thoughts, mm -hmm. you know, when I'm with the idea with 60, I, I'm uh, stiff, then I am stiff, you know, and uh, when I fear, this is the emotional part, if I feel falling, like my mother did, she fell, <laughs> you know, so these things, uh, the thoughts condition a lot of, if you are stiff or if you are, if you are able to be a little bit more relaxed, yeah. So we're, because they're all variations of the same thing, there is cross-communication mm -hmm. among the levels. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. But there are easier ways in according to which level you're using. Okay. But they all depend upon the same underlying structure, the tetraseed or archosoma. You just adapt those functions to the level at which you're operating. If you want to change your thinking mind, you go into attending to the thoughts and remembering what they were and feeling into them, imagining them, and intending to penetrate into the thought. So you still have those four. Mm -hmm. You're applying it, though, according to the, char the characteristics of the level at which you're operating. So the Tetra Seed is extremely potent for dealing with all kinds of things. It's just that how you apply it technically varies according to the material you're dealing with. Okay. And in, really, it's all shadow material. The stiffness of aging, that's just shadow material. It's unconscious. It doesn't even have to be disowned. It can just have faded from familiarity. Mm -hmm. Emotional states, mental states, attitudes, beliefs, all the levels, the stages of development. It applies to the archaic no less and no more than to second tier integral. Exactly. And this is what I always feel, that these things are not addressed. They are integral people who may be have integral thoughts and a kindness and what whatever, but this part of the belief system and of the body and of the consciousness, real awareness of what they are doing, let's say, <laughs> where where they are swimming in, I think it is missing. And people, the people even don't notice it, that it is missing. That's my idea about it. And so when you say these things, I sort of 
you know? Mm-hmm. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's revealing. Mm-hmm. Thank you. That's so good. we found something that's more fundamental than the stages and the states. Yeah. And it's the te- it's the tetra seed or arcasoma or agency communion eros and agape. Mm-hmm. That's more fundamental than the four quadrants, more fundamental than the stages, more fundamental than the states. Mm-hmm. It becomes all of those. This is this is very really good because I thought that the main missing thing is the the emotional um, literacy. The emotional, you know, intelligence. intelligence, where you also know the emotions in your body. But this, what you say, is even more fundamental. Mm-hmm. You know, I had only the emotion. I didn't think I, I, the body was included, but not really in the same way. I, it was not, how to say, not so connected. I thought it's all, let's say, the fault of the emotions, that not including the emotions. Yeah, you know? we got to the emotional level quite yeah. well. Yeah, yeah. Not below. Yeah, and that it has oh. nothing to do with your level of development. This I had the intuition too. Mm-hmm. That there are people in let's say in the purple state who are much more developed than in this, you know, mm-hmm. than people who are at stage what did I say? People are in green or in yellow or something, you know? And that was always so confusing. I found it confusing, and I thought, you integral people, you need to learn that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going somewhere else with uh, what, what you just hinted at, that it has nothing to do with a stage or a state. And, and so I started thinking, you mentioned something about what applied to other than what we consider alive or conscious. Uh, inanimate things, all the way up, all the way down, <laughs> the supplies. And I don't know if you want to go into that now, but that's extremely intriguing I'm, to me. I'm really, I'm really glad about that. I still have to order it in my mind, but uh-huh. it is about what what I found out with my things, the belief systems, the the waters in which you swim, you don't see them, and so you are continuing it mm-hmm. of. Uh, acting in a way which consciously you wouldn't do, but you do because you don't realize what patterns you are in. And you are opening it up in a wider space. It's not only the belief system, but it's, we had this little bit connection with the body, but not in, not in this way. This is great. Thank you. This is like applying the myth of the given to so much more <laughs> than, than, than we do in, in integral theory. Yeah. So now let's bring it the direction you just asked for, Mark. I have refrained from doing that to avoid information overload earlier. Yeah. But it's very easy. Very easy. In physics, there is a term, particularly quantum physics, the term is tendency. Mm -hmm. Gravity, an inanimate force, has is the tendency of things to move towards greater mass yes. or for masses to move together. Yes. Tendency is inanimate intention. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. I everything, everything in space-time has location. Mm-hmm. When you pay attention to something, you locate it. Mm-hmm. So location and attention are two versions of the same thing. Location is inanimate and attention is animate. Mm -hmm. In common physics, the thing that's taken for granted is time or duration. Mm -hmm. Things persisting. Mm -hmm. That's the inanimate form of memory. Persistence. The universe, persistence. Mm -hmm. Certainly. Mm -hmm. So the physical universe is a memory which is constantly changing. And that brings us to the last one, which is for anything to persist, it must be changing. Yes. It In would, common it terms. Be noticed otherwise. That's right. Yeah. Hunters um, can't see prey that is immobile, is frozen. Yeah. That's why 
in the animate world, there's a f freeze reaction to danger. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the movement of everything is the only meaning for the word time. Time is always measured and observed as movement. Mm -hmm. The cesium clock has the vibration of that cesium atom, it's movement. Any common clock has a second hand, moving. The heartbeat, which defines the second. You know what a second is? It's the time or distance between a first heartbeat and a second heartbeat. <laughs> a second heartbeat defines a second. Uh -huh. And this comes from, you know, back when in the Middle Ages or whenever, when the terms of measurement were defined by the king, mm -hmm. the foot was the length of the king's foot, mm -hmm. the inch from the tip of the thumb to the first joint, mm -hmm. the ounce was a swallow, mm -hmm. the second, as I said, is a second heartbeat. So it all goes back to somatic. So the apparently inanimate features of this universe have exact correlates with the animate in terms of the tetra seed. Mm -hmm. Duration, tendency, location, and motion. When a human being faces experience, as we do perpetually, we're always experiencing the oncoming of newness. Mm -hmm. That's you right now, sir. <laughs> Yeah, but even so, after the call, you and Heidi will be new to each other in the moment. Yeah. What makes it seem not new is memory, mm -hmm. because there is an accumulation, an ongoing integration, which they call agape, but agape is memory. It's the enfoldment of the newness that's constantly emerging, that we locate by paying attention, and that we participate in and have meaning for because of our intentions. With no intention, no meaning. Mm -hmm. So that's how the inanimate integrates in with this schema of the arcasoma. Mm -hmm. The arcasoma includes an animate and inanimate. Now it also includes polarity, opposites, charge in physics, Attraction and repulsion, or seeking and avoidance mm -hmm. in living things. So if we take any facet, we can find its correlate in both the inanimate and in the animate realms, which are actually only artificially separated. I'm sure of that, yes. So there's a quote from the Tao Te Ching. Lao Tzu said, there is no difference between the quick and the dead. They are one channel of vitality. So it all traces back to the soma, but now I need to plug a hole here because there are those who would, hearing this, think that I'm doing reductionism, <clears throat> that everything is reducible to the soma, but this is not what I'm saying. Why? Because in, in physics, we recognize there are two things happening. There's the particle and there's the field. Mm -hmm. And while those are not really separate, for language purposes, we'll discuss them as if they are, and then we'll clean up after. So particle means everything particular. Wave means everything possible. Yes. So possibility be becomes particular experiences. Mm -hmm. Soma does not end at the flesh. There is a field which is now recognized called the morphic or morphogenetic field. Yeah. And in physics, it's said that the behavior of the particle is determined by the field. Yeah. Likewise, the particular behaviors of the individual are determined by the morphic field, which is not outside us, it is blended into and one with our own consciousness. Yes. 
So there is no separation. I can see a question in Heidi, and I'll... Yeah, get... is it also... Uh, I, I would also add... I don't know if I understand it right, but the, the really the outside field, the uh, energetic fields which we have around, I would add that too, not only in the consciousness. That's right. <laughs> All the fields. <laughs> So in physics, we have fields, magnetic fields, electrical fields. The light of the universe is electromagnetic. And we have gravitational fields. And the, all of these determine the behavior. You get a, a charged particle, throw it into a, a magnetic field, and it will change direction according to the shape of the magnetic field or mm -hmm. the electrostatic field. Fields determine the behavior of particles. Yeah, and we as humans... Uh, by our, our heartbeat, we can emanate uh, energy, or by our mental field, we can emanate energy and modulate the, the fields around us. So it's both ways. Exactly. I, I, I think I'm a little bit uh, have a problem with the word determination. It sounds so deterministic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well. Yeah, that, it, there's a kind of absoluteness implied yeah. by the term, but it isn't absolute because there are so many fields interacting mm -hmm. and memory itself has a field effect. It shapes our attention. Oh. It shapes our ability to recognize experience. Yes. Sure. So, so, all, so, so to, we're not reducing it to the flesh body at all. Mm -hmm. We're simply showing how that side of things, the flesh form, the living mm -hmm. biological form, reflects and is continuous with the fields that take the four fundamental forms, attention, intention, memory, imagination, or location, tendency, persistence, and movement. Well, how many videos are there in what you've been telling us today? Probably we should chop it up to a bunch because yeah. Uh, yeah. it could, um, it's very chewy. It goes very deep and a person could contemplate these and hopefully will because it leads to an intuitive awakening and arousing of our fundamental faculties mm -hmm. that energize all of our functions. I'm distracted by the dog and the phone at the moment. But Let the dog answer the phone. Uh, he, he would have, she would happily do that, yes. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. So, so we covered a big chunk there, and we integrated a lot of things. Yeah. Now, in terms that we can bring home out of the thinking mind exclusively into the feeling being. Mm -hmm. I'm going to hang on a little bit until Heidi gets back. Okay, it may take a minute. So we haven't talked about some of the interest, other interesting things. We we'll touch on it later, but entropy. Yeah. Very interesting how it fits into this whole thing because entropy. No, no, I'm stopping myself. That sounds like aging. <laughs> Somehow. Well, it does, but this is something again we can go into a little more technically and bring it home to personal experience. But I, if I say it now, uh, I'll have discharged a certain flow irretrievably. Better to wait and say it, uh, let's say when Heidi is back or on another call. Okay. Okay. What I did here was to summarize a foundation to make sense of some things. <clears throat> This this wasn't the part that you had to get gotten so excited about. No, no, no. no. okay. But I, because of Heidi's questions, I saw the opportunity to address a lot of points here, including those in the integral teaching. Mm -hmm. You know, because in the languaging of it, there is. It's said as if there is a gross, a subtle, a causal. Yeah, mm -hmm. and there ain't. <laughs> what there is, is different modulations of the same field, yes. mm -hmm. which would be called Brahman in a mm -hmm. certain teaching. Yeah. Okay. Well, at least as far as the stages are concerned, they will speak of waves rather than levels, for example. Uh, mm -hmm. I think we could apply the same 
distinction, you know, to the to the gross, subtle, and causal. That these are just modulations of the same kind of motions. Yeah, yeah. it's like the foam on an ocean wave <laughs> is part of the wave, is yeah. part of the ocean, but it looks like foam. It looks like foam, yes. <laughs> and they give it a different name, but in actuality, there's not like the foam, and then there's the ocean. Oh gosh, isn't it, what a process that has been for for humans you know, to discriminate and particularize the universe and, and so be able to manipulate it and move it around and push it and make it do what we want it to do mm. uh, to 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 even uh, distinguish when it's doing one thing or another is a, a monumental task and then when we get to when we get to well, I think it starts to happen in green we start to say oh there's more than pieces here. <laughs> yeah, well, it happens in second tier. Yeah. And there are more than pieces. There are holes. Yes, there are holes. Yeah. And then we have and to re it. Just these pieces. Yeah. Hmm? I, I feel like I, I'm conscious in myself of having probably about a year ago really rediscovered the purple in myself, you know, mm -hmm. just to... Uh, I had to get into teal in order to notice my purple. <laughs> and, well, <clears throat> what, what about beige? You know, I, do I have to get to turquoise before I can reintegrate my beige, you know, and come back like a, an octave higher, back to the same, uh, the same sort of relationship with the world, but in a completely different way. So it, it's, I think we do. I think we have to go second tier in order even to be willing to go back to the earlier stages of first tier. Yep. First tier doesn't want to. First tier just wants to be where it is yep. and not explore the others. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. So uh, for our main purpose, I'm going to wait for Heidi to come back. We can have conversation. Oh, you're back. Good. Yes. Don't, don't so tell her what we avoid, said. Don't I, I would tell her that I, we... I, I don't think I can get any more in my head for today. I'd All right. love to, to have, uh, if you can send us the re recording, yeah. uh, I would love to yeah. re he he hear Re it because I had certain, you know, I would call this intuition spaces open and there yes. were things going on. Uh, 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 so, well, I don't know if I really got it. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can go more deeply into all of these things intuitively. Yeah. And... In fact, the the gold key release came out of the explorations of these domains as my own intuition became more online. And I had enough online that I could hold multiple viewpoints simultaneously yeah. and then start to operate upon my own underpinnings. Mm -hmm. And it's, as you may have seen from working with gold key release, sometimes it's hard to continue because the mind dissolves midstream and it's hard to remember the next step. Yeah. Have you noticed that? Yes. Even when you're coaching someone else, your mind dissolves while theirs dissolves. Have you felt that? <laughs> Mutual dissolution. Uh, yeah. Bad clinical arrangement. I was going to say better than sex. <laughs> well, that could be too. Depends on what your business is, yes. Okay. 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 So this is where I'm bridging into what I had in mind, which is uh, what I've written in the entry on the gold key release is before a person is ready for the later procedures, they have to have trod the path enough in the gold key release to have a recognition of the feeling of the movement from form to no form. Uh -huh. Once that's been done and there's familiarity, it's like a muscle that's been activated or a skill that's been learned or a direction of change that has been brought to life. Then a person can take on the really potent process, which is the middle way memory matrix ritual. So here's my intro introduction to that, not to the, to the ritual itself, but to the, to the topic. Uh, I started working with world conditions in myself using that procedure just about two days ago. Mm -hmm. 
And dear God, was that revealing. So far, if I can remember them, I've done... Well, recently I did the Wall Street banks and the International Monetary Fund. Mm -hmm. And I ran those through. I also did the Israelis and the Tibetans because they're in a very similar situation. The Tibetans are where the Jews were as refugees in 1948. Only the Tibetans at least have countries that will take refugees. Jews didn't. Yeah. Okay. And then China and what was it? I'll have to look it up, yep. but no what no wasn't it? It had to do with the the Chinese aggressiveness, particularly as a financial force. Uh -huh. I, I don't remember what it was, but my point was I discovered some very interesting oh 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 the US Congress. Uh -huh. China and the US Congress, I discovered that for all the seeming opposition, they're really members of the same camp. <laughs> same thing with the International Monetary Fund and Wall Street. Yeah. Same thing with the Israelis and the Tibetans. Mm -hmm. There are commonalities. There are differences, but what I saw it do was to reveal the underlying secret motivations. So actually, I'm going to be writing to the TV program 60 Minutes and suggest that they do an interview series in one segment, the International Monetary Fund commenting on the Wall Street bankers, uh -huh. the Wall Street bankers commenting on the International Monetary Fund. Okay. And if it turns out the World Bank is different than the International Monetary Fund, what will happen is, even though they're all in the same camp, which is power and greed, mm -hmm. they will also be critical of each other. That means that their own kind will be criticizing them. Mm -hmm. So if we could get 60 Minutes to do a segment on that, powered by the mass of public attention, we may set into motion some leverage for a reform from within the camp because it's too embarrassing for them to be criticized by their own kind publicly. <laughs> okay. Now, I haven't done the rainforest. Of, I'm going to do rainforest destruction and climate change. Mm -hmm. And there are going to be things revealed there. What, what this has done, I made the changes in myself as I ran through the, the procedure and I felt and identified as all of the parties involved had to in order to operate upon it. Sure. And I went through a lot of internal changes from doing these procedures in myself. I don't know what the fallout will be, but it, one of the results was a recognition that I could get 60 minutes maybe to stick a lever into the world banking situation in a way that they would want to do because it'd be a great story. You see what I'm saying? There's yeah. this potential. But I'm wondering, Lawrence, when you are doing that uh, all by your own, these deep processes, who is taking care for you that you don't spin away, you know? It is a little bit like Jung said when he did his process work into the archetype. He said if he hadn't had his normal life and his wife and his children, he might have uh, disappeared, you know, mentally. <laughs> so, well, that happens as I go through these procedures. Yeah. Uh, um, there are mornings. I, I commonly wake up early in the morning, bef long before daylight. And that's when I run these procedures. And it's been common for me to come to four hours later. Yeah, it's like I do a step, I dissolve, I lose it completely, I come back, I pick it up where I left off, which, by the way, isn't easy because I have to remember where I left off <laughs> and what the next step is. Yeah. And so it can, you know, as you say, Heidi, yes, uh, I do dissolve and then I come back. Yeah, hopefully. Because that is working power. all the time. You know, I'm a little preoccupied that you won't come back. I mean, 
Oh no, no. You remember the field determines the particle. So our life pattern still exists. The physical environment in which we live, our life situation, all of these still exist and have a force that converges, comes together, and is experienced as ourselves. So you don't. Even if you did, I wouldn't. I wouldn't mind. <laughs> I wouldn't mind just dissolving out of this this domain here. There's like, what the hell am I doing spending in this place? There's almost nothing of any attraction to me in this in this earth experience. Yeah. Practically nothing. And I have, you know, I have a brother and a mother, but I have no intimate partner. So there's really almost nothing to keep me here. But the only thing passion keeps... to find out these things, these keep you well, that's because right. you couldn't do it somewhere else. That, well, yeah, that's right. There's a creative impulse. And that, that's what keeps me going, is the creative impulse. When these things are given to me and I bring them into form, that's what keeps me going. That's what feeds me. That's what gives me any life energy, is the creative flow that's given to me. Mm -hmm. It's all this unique self-emergence. That's what keeps me going. Good. Yeah. So I, like I've built my somatic practice. Yeah, I learned from Tom Hanna, but the bulk of my practice are things that have come through me. Good. And that's what keeps me going. Mm -hmm. This is good. This yeah, is it's, good. It's excellent. And I would love to have a regular conversation with you about these things because I really like it, but now it's too much. Yeah, I have no, it's to... enough. Yeah, it's we, enough, yeah. We go one hour for bike ride, and then I have an, uh, a thing on the internet. So. Yeah, yeah. My purpose in in saying, Mark, I wanted to have a conversation, was to open the possibility of not just myself doing it, mm -hmm. but minimum three people working on any issue, any mm -hmm. pattern, uh -huh. and doing it as a group because. My perspective is only my perspective, and what I'm embedded in, I don't notice. But you would likely notice it, and I would notice things about you. So, in, in short, we could be the first set of three okay. to do this. I would want, frankly, a, you know, three is minimum. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm doing it solo, but... There's something that happens with three that doesn't happen with one. True. And, you know, if there are others who come into this, they'll have to have prepared themselves to be capable of running the more advanced procedure by running gold key until it's familiar. They know the phenomena of that process, which is of dissolution, right? Uh -huh. Emergence and dissolution and then new creativity in the space created after the dissolution. Because we will do our best to study that a bit, little bit. Okay, yeah. little bit more. Yeah, yeah. So we take only that one mm -hmm. in, in the future. Yeah, the middle way, the middle way memory matrix ritual. Read through it. Don't fuss about understanding it all or doing it. Although there is a coaching recording present on that page, I have in mind for us to have calls like this, where we run through different facets of the world crisis, which by the way, I discovered one of my discoveries, I told you there's very little to keep me here. What's been keeping me here is these world crises. Well, they, they, they capture <laughs> my attention. You know, it's, it's like, it's got me. When I hear about the Wall Street bankers and what they're doing and what our federal government is failing to do and their behavior of the Congress, these things I get, I get largely, I get angry. I get outraged by this type of thing and it catches my attention and keeps me anchored in this domain here. Mm -hmm. So if I clean those things up, it'll be much the way Ken talked about when he talked about his three years of solitude writing sex ecology and spirituality mm -hmm. 
and how he went through the agonies of touch deprivation until he had this breakthrough, let go of that, and his meditation practice suddenly greatly deepened. So as we work through this, there are, let's say, unexpected side benefits in that if we dissolve the grip that we have on these dysfunctional facets of the world process, we will start to rise. Good. Now I rise. I have to cut you off because it's too much for me. Okay. I got it. All right. <laughs> All right. I have to move a little bit because otherwise I get too old and too immobile. Like, well, it's good. Heidi, like... look up my website, somatics.com. Yeah, you, you yep, I'm there. there. Yeah, it was okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, and it, let's get the Myth of Aging series, the cat stretch exercises. Mm -hmm. And there's no cat and there's no stretching, but there <laughs> is. I have a very good uh, spine. I can, you cannot see it, but when I go down, I yeah. can have the flat hands and even more on the floor. This is not oh, well, the problem. That's good. This is all, all mobile. My legs are. And my knees. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's why we go biking. You know? Okay. <laughs> okay. So right, that's a topic we can open later. Yeah. Okay. Let's. We're going to be kind of busy now for <clears throat> Wednesday, Thursday. Friday also. Uh, yeah, yeah. Probably Saturday. Yeah. Saturday we can have another. Let's try to get us back together on Saturday. If, All right. If, if that's okay with you. Yeah, the Saturday is an enforced rest day for me that I use for transformative work. Okay. So this would fit for that. That would fit. Yeah, because it involves, ex uh, what's the word, extracting from the vulgar secular world process okay. and purification and grooming. Okay. So that Saturday would be fine. For me, the time would be starting three hours from now, whatever time it is for you there. Oh, well, that would make it uh, uh, 5, 8, 8 p.m. It's about, 8 it's, it's almost 5 right now. Okay, so that would be about probably an hour to run the process the first time. Okay. And if it's 8 p.m., so 8 and 3, it's 11 is noon you. time. Right, so I'll make that notation. And we, sh we probably should do this as a Google Hangout. Okay. Because Skype is unreliable for recording, but Google Hangouts, Google will record this, and then if I need to edit, I can, like phone calls and such. Sure. Mm -hmm. All right. So you call us, we'll call you. Which would you like? Well, we're, as a Google Hangout? Mm -hmm. We can just plan on eight your time, noon my time, yeah. and I'll see about launching the Hangout since I need the practice. I'm okay. just getting started with this Google Hangout thing. I can help you when you want. Uh, you okay. Go on Skype and I, I teach you how to go into the Hangout. Mm -hmm. And it would be really good if we could get a fourth person, preferably a female, yeah. to balance it's gender. Bettina. Maybe Bettina. I mean, I'd be open. Bettina is impatient, yeah. and she didn't show up for the last occasion. I'm thinking probably Gertraud, because she's been more receptive. Very possible. But I would, I, but you know, another female would be good because a four is a minimum structure, uh, or a minimum what's a unit of structure. Okay. In space time, four. Is, so if we can get a fourth person, very interesting, and then we'll see from working with this, whether or not this has effects on the larger visible world process or whether it just cleans us up. Okay. This is something I don't know yet. No. So, okay, I'll leave it at that. And we're on then for Saturday. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it looks like Skype successfully recorded this occasion. That means I can go in and trim it a little bit and put it up on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Good. And next time I'll have a little screen behind yeah. us. So yeah, we, we'd like to have a chance to see this again before 
Well, before Saturday, if that's possible. Yeah, and I'll tend to that this morning. Okay, wonderful. And then I'll get back to my other creative project. <laughs> <laughs> Don't even tell me what it is. All right. Okay. All right. We got to say goodbye. All right. Goodbye. Goodbye. Let's see. Bye-bye. Be well and prosper. Okay. Nano, nano. <laughs> <laughs>